welcome to Great Chefs of the Caribbean, featuring the new world cuisine from some of the island's finest chefs. When the select and well-heeled guests come to Necker Island, they enjoy the food of Scott Williams, a native of England. He began his training in London, then worked in several restaurants in and around the city. His entree is a straightforward grilled swordfish with ginger soy beurre blanc and crushed potatoes. And then we strain those off. The method for what the chef calls crushed potatoes begins by draining boiled potatoes. And into another pan, put about half a cup of the olive oil. Don't heat it up. Just warm through your spring onion. After the sliced green onion is wilted, the drained potatoes go into the skillet and are broken up with a spoon. Meanwhile, portions for the grilled swordfish are cut. The fish is seasoned with ground black pepper and a little olive oil. This stovetop grill is quite hot. As you will see, the grill marks are burned in rather quickly. The chef continues with his crushed potatoes, which by the time they are served will resemble lumpy mashed potatoes. Now chopped parsley is added to the potatoes. Baby carrots, zucchini, and yellow squash were blanched and are heated with a little butter just before presentation. Using two spoons, the chef shapes the potatoes as with canals. The warmed vegetables are seasoned and an unusual ginger-infused beurre blanc is presented. These are deep fried basil leaves.
most of Otmar Weber's early career was spent in his native Germany. Later, he would work in Switzerland, the Italian Riviera, and Turkey. He came to Grand Cayman in 1969, and in June of 1985 opened his own operation, Otmar's. His entree this time is a signature dish, Caribbean stuffed lobster. Today we're gonna to prepare for you a Caribbean stuffed lobster. Uh, I have a beautiful lobster here. Unfortunately, it's a main lobster from the States. Uh, we'll be flying him in life here to the island uh, as it is right now off season to produce local lobster, or fish for local lobster. It will do the same thing. Uh, I dip this uh, live lobster here into boiling water and I add a little bit of wine, white, white wine to it. Some pepper. A half an onion. Cut up just in few little pieces. And some salt. and let him boil for about seven to eight minutes. After that, we will remove it, cut it in half, and clean it and stuff it with a seafood and white wine sauce and stuffing. I prepare, in the meantime, while our lobster is cooking here, I will prepare the white wine sauce for you. In a little skillet, we're using some butter. Let it melt, set it on the side so it's not too hot. In the meantime, I cut a few little onion, very fine diced. I leave the remainder of the onion for a little later. Add it to my butter. And just make sure that the onions are just glazed. Don't brown. Once the butter is melted, we add a little bit of flour. As with the onions, do not let the flour brown. And it's called a roux, where we add some nice heavy cream. Some white wine. After cooking but not browning the flour, the sauce is periodically thinned out with either white wine or the poaching liquid used for the lobster. That we're going to set on the side for a little while and let it boil while I'm preparing now the seafood which we stuffed the lobster with. and a little bit more onions. Add them in my skillet with a little bit butter. And I take some mango here. it in bigger pieces. Also included are fresh mushroom pieces. A nice uh, avocado pear.
and we put it all together and wait for it. In the meantime, I have some crab meat and some shrimp and some scallops pre-cooked here, which we're adding to our glazed onions. Some crab meat. And a few scallops. And add this all to our frying pan. Now we season it with a little bit of pepper. Some salt. And then we add our mango, avocado, and our mushrooms into it. While our lobster is boiling nicely there. We now take our sauce and strain it into our mixture. Meanwhile, the lobster is cooked, the claw meat is retained for garnish, while the body was split lengthwise and the cavity cleaned. And we use this little bit claw meat here later on for our garnish, while we're removing the meat from the body. So now we can set our on the plate already. And then we're going to slice this here in little medallions. The medallions are then warmed through in garlic butter. Melt it and saute the lobster in it one more time. is now ready to be assembled on top of the stuffing. For the garnish, As frequently happens in the Caribbean, David Kendrick came to visit a sister on St. Croix and ended up staying. A self-taught cook, he opened his first operation in 1985, and except for an intermission when Hurricane Hugo plastered the island, has operated restaurants ever since. His entree is swordfish piccata. Uh, now we're gonna do a swordfish piccata with a lemon caper butter, and we'll start the batter now. It's flour. Parmesan cheese. A 
one egg, and milk. need to add a little bit more Parmesan as you're going for the thickness. Scraping the bowl. The batter's finished, and we'll get the oil ready in the pan. The swordfish is cut into serving portions, dredged in flour, and coated with the batter. It will be presented with slices of starfruit and accompanied by a simple pan sauce made with lemon juice, white wine, capers, and butter. Okay, now we'll start the swordfish. Take a nice medallion of sword. like this. You need to dredge it in flour first. Just lay it in the batter. And make sure your oil is hot. You know, as you let it brown and puff, and then flip. And then you finish it in the oven. 400 degrees for seven to eight minutes. Now we raise the heat. We add a little bit of capers. Fresh parsley. Lemon juice. And a little bit of white wine. That goes down a little bit. Now we add the butter. Well, we mound in the butter so it incorporates instead of breaking.
half a garnish. Take a little star fruit or carambola. Give it in some parsley. Two-thirds of the island of Hispaniola is the Dominican Republic, the remaining third Haiti. Philippe Mangereau, executive chef at Casa de Campo Resort since 1990, began his career in his native France and came to the Dominican Republic from Ma Maison in Los Angeles. He prepares filet of sea bass with Creole sauce. Uh, it's a filet of, uh, not group of sea bass, it's a filet of sea bass, local sea bass, the white fish. Uh, white meat, which is pretty rich and delicate. Uh, for this recipe, it's gonna, I'm going to do uh, three uh, in three time. One will be uh, the sauce, Creole. The garnish will be a tropical puree. Okay. For the Creole sauce, I will need some uh, nice red tomatoes, uh, one celery branch, some Cuban pepper, also called Anaheim pepper, white onion, okay and uh, cilantro ancho, which is here and already chopped. Okay, for the tropical puree, I'm gonna need an orange, I'm gonna need a banana, I'm gonna need pineapple, sweet potato, okay, which is here already peeled, okay, an apple, and cinnamon and some cinnamon stick. The chef starts with the tropical puree. I'm gonna cut the sweet potatoes into cube. The sweet potato chunks and half an onion are covered with hot water. Then other seasonings are added. And add half a stick of cinnamon with One piece of orange skin, some salt, and I'm going to put that on the fire for approximately 20 to 30 minutes. The rest of the ingredients for the puree are prepped. Half of pineapple. An apple, I'm going to chop in small piece, cut in small piece all these ingredients. The fruits are cooked in caramelized sugar. A cinnamon stick is also added. Okay, okay once the sugar has get to a caramel color and consistency, I'm gonna pour my diced fruit in it, and I'm gonna saute them for approximately five to eight minutes with a cinnamon stick. All the ingredients are processed. Two. Mix it with the sweet potatoes. And bring 
doing everything to a pure consistency. The puree is seasoned with salt and white pepper and kept warm. Part of the Creole sauce involves cooking quartered tomatoes and a bay leaf in white wine. The second part is to have all the ingredients of the Dominican Creole sauce, which are the following one. It's celery, diced celery, very thinly diced celery, chopped onion, chopped Cuban pepper, also called Anaheim pepper, diced tomato, and chopped cilantro. These vegetables are stewed in olive oil. Once the tomato are cooked for two, three to five minutes, we're gonna strain it to recuperate all the juice mix of the tomato mixed with the white wine and the herbs, which is a bay leaf in this case. The juice is blended with olive oil, lemon juice, salt, and pepper. It will later be combined with the cooked vegetables, which were finished here with chopped cilantro. Now the chef prepares the fish. Some beautiful sea bass, white sea bass, which we're first gonna season with salt and ground fresh ground pepper. Once my fish is seasoned, I'm gonna put a thin layer of Dijon mustard on it. and then bread with uh, breadcrumbs, cilantro, and garlic, a combination of breadcrumbs, cilantro, and garlic, the upper part of the fish, with not too much, of course. Tapping very slowly to take off the extra of the bread. In the very light saute pan, small saute pan, I'm gonna put a touch of olive oil some chopped garlic. Gently place the fish in the pan with somewhat wine. And bake this beautiful piece of fish for three to four minutes. At 300 degrees. Now the last touch for the sauce is to warm up the sauce. The emulsion sauce. Bring and add some of the Creole sauce into it. Now this sauce have no starch whatsoever, no dairy produce, so it's a very fragile sauce. Canal shapes of the fruit puree began presentation. I'm gonna make two nice canal of tropical puree. Gently place the fish of not totally but almost over it and gently serve this very light Creole sauce. Around the fish. Here you are. Keith Griffin, chef owner of Lantana's on Grand Cayman, was born and received his culinary training in London. He worked in the city for five years before moving to Bermuda and later to Grand Cayman. His entree is barbecued swordfish with shrimp and squid ink risotto, garnished with mango salsa. Barbecue sauce is started with chopped onions, garlic, and tomatoes. One tablespoon of paprika. One tablespoon of ketchup. One tablespoon of honey. And 
and uh, about a quarter tablespoon of hot sauce. And we can just put this on a low heat to simmer for about 20 minutes. After simmering, the tomato chunks are broken up and the sauce is pureed with a hand processor. A side dish is risotto. Chopped onion and arborio rice are cooked in a little butter. We're going to add about one pint of fish stock, hot fish stock, but we're going to add it slowly, a little at a time, so that the rice can absorb it as it cooks. An interesting flavor factor is squid ink. The fish stock is periodically added and absorbed. Then chopped lobster meat and a Caribbean green called Kalaloo are added. They are sauteed in a little butter before going into the risotto. One quarter cup of Kalaloo, which is a local vegetable similar to uh, spinach. A mango salsa is prepared. Two tablespoons of diced red bell pepper. One tablespoon of chopped scallion. One tablespoon of chopped fresh cilantro. Juice from one fresh lime. And one tablespoon of olive oil. Toss those around together to combine. A dressing that will garnish starts with crushed garlic in olive oil. One cup of diced fresh pineapple. One quarter cup of dark rum. One half cup of pineapple juice. We'll just reduce that by about half. Next we add in uh, half a cup of chopped fresh cilantro leaves. Stir that in. This mixture is also processed. Just blend it about halfway. We don't want it to be too fine. Finally, the swordfish and shrimp are prepared. The shrimp is dredged in flour and deep fried, and the swordfish is grilled. Brush the fish with a little barbecue sauce. Presentation starts with the risotto. It will be enclosed in blanched fennel. sauce around. And we can garnish with a little fresh chives and 
Thanks for fresh mint. Chef Dane Smith has owned the Stingray Cafe since 1996. Prior to that, he had extensive experience in hotel kitchens, including the big El Conquistador and the Donald Trump property, St. Moritz Hotel. His appetizer reflects his interest in Caribbean cuisine and uses Benito, the smallest and strongest flavored tuna, in a tartare. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is to take the cilantro and chop it up a bit. We're going to place it into a blender so it doesn't have to be chopped up real fine. But uh, this is cilantro, it's native of Puerto Rico, and it grows wild all over the island. The chef added cold water to the cilantro and is required to blend and scrape down the side several times before the puree is finished. The puree is a significant flavor factor in the aioli. Now we're going to make the, uh, the garlic aioli. Okay, we have the uh, egg yolk, lemon juice, the mustard, the garlic and we'll mash the garlic. This is roasted garlic. Mashes up very easily. adding the oil in a stream. It'll become the consistency of mayonnaise when it's ready. Season it with uh, a little bit of salt, cayenne pepper, and a little fresh ground white pepper. And we'll add a little bit more lemon juice right on top of that to help all the spices dissolve and mix together and blend the flavors. At this point, we'll add the uh, cilantro puree. And it becomes a beautiful, brilliant green color there. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to slice the tuna very thinly. And as you see, it should be very uh, translucent should be very brightly colored. And uh, for the tuna tartare, you really need to have a grade A or a sushi grade tuna. The tuna is cut into a medium dice. The tuna is flavored with Bermuda onion, aioli, ginger, cayenne pepper, lemon juice, and rice wine vinegar. Really, that's plenty for what we're doing. Fine. Start out with finely minced Bermuda onions. We're going to take some of the cilantro aioli that we just made. Just 
very small amount, just a pinch of uh, ginger, and literally a pinch of cayenne, salt, lemon juice, and rice wine vinegar. Then we're going to use the ground black pepper, a rather coarse grind, and then gently mix it up. The garnish includes baby greens and onion sprouts. Put the sauces on the plate. To sauce the plate, we put the sauce in a squirt bottle. We're gonna spread it out. And this is a sweet soy. The first sauce was the aioli. And we'll fill our cylinder. Now this could be uh, done as well with a PVC pipe that has been cut to this uh, size and shape as well. Okay, we're going to press it down. Deep fried yuca chips garnish the tartare. Okay, then we're going to place this, the tuna tartare, in the cylinder in the center of the plate. And we're going to take our uh, baby greens, just a little grapeseed oil, and a little white wine vinegar. Now we're going to unmold the tuna tartare. It would be a good idea to thoroughly chill the tartare in the cylinder before service. La Samana on St. Martin in the French West Indies is managed by the Rosewood Company, which also has, among others, the mansion on Turtle Creek in Dallas. La Samana's executive chef, Terry Alex, got his early culinary training in Normandy and came to the resort in 1996. His entree is filet of red mullet. Okay, so the first step is we have the Red millet, it's the local fish that we have in Caribbean island. It's filleted and we had removed all the bone that we have in the middle and on the side. We have one tomato cherries. We have the rosemary. We have some um, thyme and basil. It's only for the decoration at the end. We have some endive. It's only the leaf that we are using. And some confit of tomatoes black olives, and the veal stock. What the chef called tomato confit is essentially oven-dried tomato. The chef begins by cooking the endive in olive oil. <clears throat> and we put directly the endive leaf inside. Okay. With a sea salt and ground pepper. And we cover with the plate for about um, five minutes. On the other side, we can start with the veal stock to make the sauce. So I'm taking um, another pan on this side. We put some veal stock. Already the veal stock is uh, one reduction of um, well, porto wine with charlot and the veal stock pass through a sieve and some piece of butter. Okay. 
and we need to prepare the black olives. So for the black olives, I want only to use some part of the olives with the seed out and making some julienne. Um, so now I switch off the fire and I want to add the coffee of tomato to warm a little bit. Three or four pieces. And the julienne of black olive to put directly on the sauce. Okay. The fish is cooked in olive oil. Okay, so same olive oil <coughs> with southern the red millet, sea salt. Ground pepper. The both sides. The skin side of the mullet has been scored to prevent and curling. We'll start to cook the red millet on the skin side only. I think it's okay. Okay. The method for cooking the mullet is to thoroughly brown the skin side. Turn the fish over and take the pan off the heat, letting the second side finish without direct fire. The season of the sauce. It's good. Okay. I think we can go again. So we remove. So. I need to move that on this side. Remove the red millet fillet. Okay. This side. And the time for us to dress the plate, it will be cooked on the other side. Okay. Taking the endive in the center. This. Some piece of tomato. We stop the sauce. So to be in the center. And we put the sauce with the black olive around. Like this. No more. We can serve up all the sauce. And here on the squeeze we have only the basil leaf with uh, crushed garlic and olive oil mix all together. We call that the pisto. So we need to move it like this and to put some nah, like this. And at the end, last decoration, we put the tomatoes and the mix of aromatic herbs. described as volcanic and mountainous. 
Since the explosive eruptions on Montserrat, life on islands like this has become more interesting. Four Seasons pastry chef Joseph Teuschler grew up with the comparatively placid mountains of Austria. His dessert this time is an iced banana souffle and coconut tart. Uh, I make an iced banana souffle with uh, a coconut tart with shaved mangoes. For the iced banana souffle, I'm using seven, eight egg whites and eight ounces of sugar. And I warm it over steam over Ben Marie until the sugar is melted. After a minute, the whites and sugar come off the heat. The sugar is melted. We beat it now until it's completely stiff. The next is I blend four bananas. With the juice from one lemon. That avoids that they got the bananas getting brown. And I put the banana puree into the egg white mixture. And fold it in. I also add two cups of whipped sweet cream, heavy cream. For the souffle mixture, we're piping this here in these paper cups, those are regular paper drinking cups, turn it upside down in tall glasses. With a piping bag, I pipe it in these cones right to the top. The cones go into the freezer for at least three hours. A sweet dough is started with four ounces of sugar, eight ounces of butter, 12 ounces of flour, two egg yolks, vanilla extract, and a pinch of salt. It is instructive to watch an experienced pastry chef quickly bring the dough together. After the dough is formed, it will be refrigerated for an hour, then pressed into small tart molds which will be filled with shredded coconut and a custard-like base. So while the dough is resting, we can make the coconut tart filling. I'm using two cups of cream, three ounces of sugar, five yolks, three ounces of caned coconut milk. I mix all the ingredients up. And my filling is ready. And that's the coconut filling on top. Bake at 350 degrees for 20 minutes. The iced banana souffles are released from the cups after dunking in warm water. We start it's a little bit of mixing. Okay, put the vanilla sauce on the center. 
little bit caramel sauce. Use There's a coconut tart in the center. The crust was coated with chocolate. And wrap the shavings around. These are thin slices of mango, which are formed into a rose-like configuration. Banana slices and chocolate cigarettes complete the plate. 